Welcome back to the show. Well, it's been uh, just over two weeks since the Prime Minister was forced to save his job. Now rumours are rife. His leadership is under threat once again. We're joined by Anthony Albanese and Christopher Pine. Good morning to you both. Nice to see you. Morning, morning. Carl. Christopher. Morning, Anthony. Again, again, again. Just goes on and on and on. Well, they're just rumours. You know, rumours <laughs> circulating out of the Canberra press mm. gallery. No basis in fact whatsoever. Uh, we're getting on with the job this week and uh, there's no suggestion there'll be any kind of motion or, or leadership change next week. News Limited says a senior minister tells them. So is News Limited uh, making it up? Well, I don't know who's talking to the press, um, but whoever it is, Someone they should is. stop it. Right. Um, so you do admit there's a leak from, the, from inside your own well, party? Well, you've just read something from News Limited. I haven't seen that, but if people are talking to the press, they should stop it. Mm. Uh, the Australian public expect us to get on with the job of governing. That's mm. why this week we're talking about welfare reform, foreign investment rules, uh, doing the things that governments need to do, preparing for the budget. Mm. That's the aspiration of the Australian public, to make their lives easy and not talk about ourselves. Oh, well, I agree. I think everyone is sick of it, and probably including Anthony I'm sure Albanese. the Labor Party is sick of it. They've been doing it for years. Well, they're just talking about themselves. Two weeks ago, Christopher Pine announced the challenge was coming on the Today Show. That's true. And now, that is true. now he, can <laughs> make, he can make the announcement <laughs> again. Because that was a different time. Because I'm, I'm it's coming as, soon as, uh, as sure as the sun will come up. There is a challenge coming. Tony Abbott's leadership is over. Mm. It's a matter of when it happens and how it happens and who replaces it. Well, him. Anthony's no stranger to leadership changes, of course, because he was involved in the Rudd to Gillard and Gillard to Rudd uh, and uh, has been a fighter and knuckle duster in the Labor Party for decades. But it's true. And when we talked about thing. ourselves, mm. when we talked about ourselves, the public punished us. You're right. And they'll punish you because this week. You haven't talked about anything except for mm. yourselves. And that's not quite in true. In the corridors, in the corridors, there were little groups of Liberals talking to each other, plotting, people on the mobile not phones. Really. But well, the truth well, is, you're right, it's we, on. Have, we have to get on, on with the job mm. of governing for Australians. And I couldn't agree with you more. If we talk about ourselves, the Australian public will turn off us. So my advice to all my colleagues is get on with your job, go back to your electorate, spend the weekend, talking to people at home, come back on Monday and let's keep on doing the things that need to be done. The problem is, the problem here is that not only um, is, you, is the Australian public stopped listening to you, but your own party stopped listening to you, the leadership group there. They're not really? listening. Well, that's why they're talking to the press every day. Well, I don't feel it. that. I'm the leader of the house. <laughs> they're trying to get rid My of... My colleagues talk to me you, all the time. You need to get out more, Christopher. <laughs> yeah, maybe. They're trying to get rid of the Prime Minister. My what? colleagues talk to me all the time. And uh, I, my sense is that the spill motion was decided two weeks ago. Mm. There's a bit of static on the television news as last night. That is not a leadership challenge. There will not be a spill motion moved next week. Mm. Uh, Two weeks ago, it was a different story, and I was quite honest about it on the Today Show on the Friday morning, and that's been dealt with. I'm absolutely as certain today that there'll be nothing changed <laughs> next week. What about the week after? <laughs> oh, <Carl>. Not so certain. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that sort of specula speculative <laughs> game. But... Well, well, you're only giving it a week. No, no, that, <laughs> if you ask about next week, I'm saying trouble. there's not going to be any leadership changes or spills at all. We're getting on with the job. We've got a budget in May. Yep. We've got the foreign investment changes the last this week. Budget yet. We've got welfare That's reform. Problem. We've got That's higher education reform. We are doing all the things that need to be done to get our economy moving. And there are actually lots of positive stories in the economy. Job ads are up, retail trade is up, growth is up. up. Well, you're come focusing on one highest, thing. What, highest we're creating 12 years. 600 jobs a day. 600 people, new jobs a day. An extra 100,000 unemployed jobs a day. since you came to office. And the problem you've got, Christopher, is that you have produced a budget already, and it's a dog of a budget. No, it's not. 300 and the of the 400 people, programs in the budget the Australian have been passed. people have rejected mm. it, and your own caucus is rejecting Rubbish. it. Rubbish. You can't just assert things. As we had 300 out of 400 measures of the budget have passed the Senate. Mm. So it's not true a what you're of, saying. A couple of quick things to get through. Um, uh, the, the evidence of Human Rights Commissioner Julian Triggs. Um, uh, it might have been a little bit all over the shop at, at various times uh, during testimony, but. Did Tony Abbott go too far, do you think? No, the truth is that we've got the people, out, the children, out of detention that Labor put into detention. No, no but let's talk about, let's talk about her, though. Um, and uh, Julie Bishop has admitted that there may have been some sort of offer. Uh, do you concede that, that, that an offer was made to her? Well, it's a bit of a he said, she said kind of uh, story between the Secretary of the Department what, and the she Human Rights the Commissioner. Well, uh, no is the answer. No. Uh, it appears from the papers this morning that she apparently asked for a, a new nah. job. 
So I don't know. I wasn't part of those conversations. The gravamen of the story, though, is that we got the kids out of detention mm. that Labor put into detention. You, you did have an appalling record with kids in detention. There was 2,000 there. It was a debacle. Both sides. Policy. Both sides in politics yep. have a poor record. We stopped in the terms boats, of, you didn't. In terms of kids in detention, you kept kids in detention uh, unnecessarily, stopped processing people. Well, you stopped you didn't make order any, to, you didn't make it In order to, to be put fair, pressure you didn't make it on the better. Senate. I accept that both sides of politics need to do better, that this report it doesn't uh, shine a good light on either side of politics mm. and what they have done instead of accepting that and saying this is about the forgotten children the name of the report gives you a bit of a hint mm. as what it's about it's about the kids instead Tony Abbott couldn't resist attacking a strong woman in Gillian Tricks and going after in a way in which statutory office holders should never be attacked but the policy side of this Carl is that when we left office in 2007, mm -hmm. there were no children in detention and the boats had been stopped. Labor brought 50,000 illegal arrivals in on 800 boats and when we took over in 2013, the report says there were 2,000 kids, kids in detention. You kept people there and didn't process them and we've got 1,800 of them out of detention. So okay. rather than being criticised, we should actually be thanked for the fact that we've stopped the boats and got the kids well, out but, of detention. Both sides moving towards having no kids in detention is a, is, is a fine attribute. Well, well if Labor way. gets back into okay, power absolutely. again, they yeah. will start the boats again. Okay, we have final... You're conceding that Labor will be in power again. If Labor gets into power again, I said. <laughs> That's rolling out I said, No, I didn't concede that. I said, if Labor gets into power again, the boats will start again. Well, what are the if Labor way? gets into power again, they'll bring the carbon tax back as oh, well. Here we go. Right, they're back to the three-word slogan, which is why they're in trouble as a government. You said you're bringing the carbon tax back. Government, please. But you've said you're bringing the carbon tax back. We have not. Please. Award of the week. Award of the week he goes to Anthony it. Albanese and his press department. <laughs> um, he, re he issued a press release yesterday. Um, this is. Um, can we have a look at the press release? Here we are. This is in relation to a media statement um, on the news that Sydney Airport Corporation Chairman uh, Max Moore Wilton, who is a very good friend of Anthony Albanese, um, plans to retire. That's that's what was on the press release. The entirety of it. Good. Now. Sometimes one word can say a lot, Carl. What are you doing to save the trees? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes one word can say more than a thousand words. It's the first time Anthony's ever been able to answer a question with one word. Oh. <laughs> How are you going with that, Chris? Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's clever. Well, all right, that'll do, guys. Thank you very much. Nice to see you all. Thank you. All right. Good to see you. Lisa. How good's a one-word slogan?